Good morning all. I've got a rather interesting circuit for you today. It's built on this breadboard and it consists of a couple of CMOS chips. Let me uh, point them out. This one is a 4070 but it could just as easily be a 4030 and it's a quad exclusive OR gate package. This one is a 4006 which is a very interesting uh, 18 stage shift register with various taps on it and the two together you might, if you're sort of thinking really hard, uh, work out that a shift register in conjunction with a load of exclusive OR gates makes up a linear feedback shift register. And this is the circuit, which I've played with several times in different incarnations. But this one doesn't drive LEDs. No, this one drives a little filter circuit down here and then goes out uh, on a socket here to a speaker. Here's my speaker. So this produces sound and it produces random sound. Yes, it produces white noise. This is what it does. It just makes that characteristic white noise rushing sound. It's got a rather nice um, fall away because I had to put a, a 100 mic cap in there because it was all a bit unstable and it is all a bit unstable still. So you get that rather nice switch off sound. Now, what do I mean by unstable? Well, one of the parts of this circuit, in fact, they're using two of the exclusive OR gates, is an oscillator, but it's quite high frequency. This capacitor here is 220 picofarads, I think, or 200 picofarads, uh, 221, yeah, 220. And that resistor is a 330K. So these are sort of high value resistor, very low value capacitor. It's trying to get the CMOS circuit to oscillate fast, 40 kilohertz, and the effect of these Component values means it's rather sensitive to external influence. Let me show you. So there's the standard white noise rushing sound. But if I put my finger near this resistor, I can get sounds that interfere with the white noise. They're almost a bit like radio frequency. They sound a bit RF, like a radio that's picking up funny signals. It probably isn't RF, it's just noise. I mean, there's lots of noise in this room from mains and also gadgets that are oscillating for one reason or another. Induced into this circuit because it's very easy to induce something into a circuit with a 330K resistor and a 220 puff capacitor. And it uh, has that rather strange effect. Now, while I was playing with this circuit, I was wondering what would the effect be of changing the three inputs to the exclusive OR gates from various tap outputs of the uh, shift register. And it does have an effect. I'll show you one of them. Let me switch it on, get the noise, and then shift one of those wires. So there's the noise. Now if I shift this wire to that tap, it's still noise, but it's got a rhythmic beat to it. And what's interesting here is if I interfere with the circuit by putting my finger near that resistor, I can get different flavours of the rhythmic beat in amongst the noise. Oh, that's a weird one. Yeah, so all sorts of really interesting rhythmic sounds within the noise. But it gets better. Let me move this wire again to that mid position and we get a tone and I can really play with that tone. And I'm not touching this resistor, I'm just getting near it. And it's quite intriguing. I'm interested to know, I might get the scope out to see what's actually happening to this waveform when I do this. And if I put my finger near that resistor in such a way that noise is induced continuously, I can get it to switch between all those varieties of tone. 
And I'll try to show you that I'm not I'm not near this thing at all. And the nearer I get, the more that induced noise becomes noise. And uh, this one's got a lovely shutdown as well. <laughs> Let's try that again. Yeah, what fun you can have with two CMOS chips and a transistor. So let's look at the circuit diagram for this noise generator. Here are the four exclusive OR gates which are in the 4070 chip or 4030. This is the shift register. Now it's not drawn in a way that you can really understand what's going on very well. So I started to map out um, on a separate piece of paper the stages of the shift register and the pin numbers. So we've got 18 stages of shift register, but they can all be linked in different configurations because um, the input to the first stage, pin six, goes through four stages, then an additional one, then another four between pins five and 10, another five stages between four and 12 with 11 as a tap after the first four and so on. Um, because this chip is a, a shift register that has multiple tap points that you can pick off it. Incidentally, if you're wondering where this circuit came from, well, it's ETI September 1980. Yes, it's almost 40 years old. And um, it, of course, is the ETI vocoder. I'm sure you realise that. Now, for those of you interested in linear feedback shift registers, and I know there are one or two of you, um, this is an interesting one because it's got three taps. This output uh, tap going to one of the exclusive OR inputs, another one here and another one here. And this is an inverter, this transistor. So you can think of it as an exclusive or an XNOR gate here, followed by an XOR gate. And then the output of the uh, final XOR gate goes back into the input to the shift register. But on the Wikipedia article for linear feedback shift registers, it says that um, maximal length polynomials coming out of uh, one of these LFSRs can only occur if you have either two or four taps or multiples of that. So a three tap LFSR is a rather curious thing. And also this inversion here, I did a search on Google for linear feedback shift registers and I could not find one example of one that had an XNOR followed by an XOR. So it's an odd thing. And a close up of the oscillator here. So there's the 330K resistor and there's the 220 picofarad capacitor. Um, these are effectively acting as inverters because one input of both of the exclusive OR gates is tied high. That turns them into an inverter. I saw this 100 picofarad capacitor on the output and I thought, well, that obviously isn't going to do much. Oh, yes, it does. Without that, it doesn't work at all. So it obviously slightly shapes the output of this second CMOS gate to make it function to clock the shift register. Pin 3 is the clock input. Without it, it doesn't work at all. And this bit of circuitry is interesting. They're actually powering these two chips, despite the errors in the pin numbering, um, through a 3K3 resistor and a 10 mic capacitor. So they have intentionally, the designer, which is Richard Becker, has intentionally made the power to these two chips rise up slowly. And I just wonder whether he's done that to ensure that this uh, LFSR is seeded with a non-zero start point, because if you put a zero into a linear feedback shift register, then it just shifts zeros constantly around the loop, and you would certainly not get any sound out. And this, this is the little uh, CR or RC uh, filter on the output, just capacitors and resistors to slightly shape the digital output and turn it into something that you can listen to on a speaker. Right, let's take a look at the output of this circuit on the oscilloscope. Uh, firstly, just with noise, I've wired it for noise. And well, yeah, that looks like noise. And the scope absolutely will not trigger on it at any setting. So let's just capture some of that and just take a look at it. And it looks pretty random and noisy 
to me so that's fine now let's put it move the wire to produce a tone let me just run that and can we see any frequencies in there possibly yes I think we can see that there are frequencies in amongst that and let's just change it by hitting the resistor yeah and it changes the content of that now I won't be forgiven for not doing an FFT on this but to be honest it didn't show me a lot so you can see that there are various harmonics I've set it for a 5 kilohertz span and a 2.5 kilohertz center but there really isn't much to see in there we can see the peaks but they don't change a lot unless I can get that one tone and I don't know if I'll be able to I'll just pause and see if I can get that tone yeah this is the one I was looking for it's um, obviously got much less in the way of harmonics in there I don't know whether we can see it on the actual trace but certainly the FFT is picking out that it has fewer harmonics and then if I switch to um, another one of these complex tones we can see it goes back to uh, these evenly spaced harmonics but yeah you can't really see much in the waveform because it is just so complex it really is just low quality noise this is noise but with no not enough random elements so it's just sounding like tones interesting and probably not much fun for you wearing headphones so what a lot of fun you can have with a circuit that was only really ever meant to produce fairly pure white noise all those people that built this circuit 40 years ago probably never experienced the fun of shifting this connection getting these tones and working through them like this Fantastic bit of circuit bending. Cheerio.